Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this video that I'm about to film, I feel like I've honestly been putting it off because I've had so much anxiety about filming this video, which is really sad. It is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Vault Collection. This thing right here. I honestly don't even want to talk about the drama that surrounds it, but I feel like a full review, I have to talk about everything. So I'm going to do that right now and get that out of the way before my review, my feelings, and my tutorial on this. So also just excuse me while I'm periodically fluffing my hair. Um, anybody who has naturally curly hair will probably understand while it's in its drying process, you kind of have to like keep some oomph in it so it doesn't dry flat and then you end up with like a triangle where it's real curly at the bottom and anyway yeah it's still damp so curly hair girls will understand that you have to kind of keep like keep shaping it while it's drying so yeah just excuse that <sighs> okay so Jaclyn Hill Morphe Vault Collection as you all know by now the amazing 35 shade palette that she came out with last year. Most people loved it, thought it was bomb, thought it was amazing. I'm one of those people. I do love that palette. I think it is amazing. And while creating that palette, there were other shades that were in the running to make that final cut of that palette that necessarily, you know, she didn't think was necessary. I feel like I'm saying necessarily and necessary a lot necessary for the 35 pan you know you have to cut it down somewhere right so these were the ones that did not make the cut to be in that palette that being said it doesn't mean these aren't good shades it's just like you have to just narrow it down i personally prefer the shades that are in the pulp um as much as i love neutrals browns orange red tones that are in her original palette actually just let me grab it I mean, don't get me wrong, there are definitely pops of color right in this area. You can see I have used it quite a bit. You know, you just have, you have to narrow it down somewhere when you're making a palette. So these are the shades that did not make the final cut for that. Now, like I was saying, I actually prefer the shades that are in this palette. I love purples and greens and stuff like that. So I was really excited for this to launch. Also, as all of you know by now, because I am late to the game making this video, it was supposed to launch June 26th or something like that. They pushed back the date because um, people who were getting it in PR, beauty influencers who were reviewing it first, were not really fond of the formula. It wasn't blending out, patchy, blah, 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 blah. And I think it was a really great move for Jaclyn Hill and Morphe to be like, whoa, 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 that is not the formula we've been working on. Let's pull it. They apparently, allegedly, destroyed all of those and they redid it because it was a pressing issue. Not a formula issue, a pressing issue. Daisy, my cat is down here licking an Ulta bag. It's so weird. She loves them. Get out. Go. Sorry if I'm zipping through this, I just know that you've all heard probably all of this already. So they pulled them, destroyed them, it was like a whole warehouse full, destroyed them, and then postponed it, and I think it launched August 18th, was when it launched again, and it also launched in Morphe stores. Not the vault with the box, but you could buy them individually. Then after it launched, People were getting them, some people were super happy, some people were still disappointed, saying that they're still patchy, they're still hard to blend out, or there's still no pigment to them. Which if something is pressed too hard, it's hard to get the product up to get it on your brush or your finger or really anything. If it is pressed too hard, it almost like seals off. There are a million conspiracy theories out there as to what's going on. I personally... Don't know, don't know if we'll ever know. Some people said Ulta got the bad ones, but then I've seen people get ones from Ulta and they're amazing. Some people say, said that they never even repressed or did anything with it, that they held it off, held off the launch because Becca was suing Morphe because of the packaging issue. 
because Jaclyn Hill, when she did a launch with Becca, did this very similar look. I've also heard Jaclyn Hill technically owns this look and logo and this whole ideal, so I don't really know. I, I choose to trust that Morphe and Jaclyn Hill would not knowingly put their name on something that they know is defective in a way. I feel like if they were going to be shady and launch the same product that everybody was saying was not very good, that they would have just done it on June 26th to begin with. I mean, why, why wait if you're going to do the exact same thing? Now that's not to say people who are not impressed by the palettes or truly seem to have a defective one are lying. That just means maybe there was still an issue with the pressing, even the second time around. Like I said, I just really, I, I mean, it would be a horrible, horrible, horrible business move if Jacqueline and Morphe were like, oh, we know it's really bad. We're going to say we're going to pull it and then launch the same thing anyway. I feel like that would be a terrible business move because people aren't stupid. I mean, people are going to be able to tell. So there's this thing with the batch codes, this and the other thing, a lot of drama. That V2 meant version 2. Jacqueline said that that's not what that means. People said that's just how something prints out with JavaScript. That V2 was a batch that was pressed together. I don't know. Mine do not say V2 on them. If anybody's curious, my batch code is AB07D. Okay, so I don't know if I covered all the drama on it. It was pushed back. Then it was launched. People still weren't super happy with it. But some people thought it was amazing. And, you know, I have something to say about swatches, too, because the whole swatch thing's kind of pissing me off a little bit. I'm going to insert some pictures of swatches and a little bit of mine. Some I swatched at Ulta. And I also got two other vault collections. I got one for my cousin, and I got one for one of my best friends. We all swatched them all. Our three vaults were consistent, and the palettes that I swatched at Ulta were consistent with ours. I wouldn't say somebody had a better palette. I feel like they were all really consistent. The ones that I've gotten to touch and play with have been consistent. Like I said, that's not to say that there aren't people out there that still got a defective one. Maybe there is still a pressing issue even with the newest batch. I forget where I was going with this. Oh, why swatches? Okay. Why swatches can piss me off. So, I swatched mine because I wanted to see, especially because of the drama. I swatched every single shade at Ulta. Again, I will insert a picture very soon here of the, all the shades I swatched at Ulta and some of the shades I've swatched with my own palettes. And I thought the swatches were good. Some of the darker shades might have been a little patchier here and there. Nothing that wasn't able to be worked with, though. And then I go online, and I see these, like, bold-ass, like, pigmented, they, they look like paint. They're completely opaque swatches. And then I look into the comments where people are like, how did you swatch that? And people are like, I primed my arm, and I use Mac Fix Plus, and I use a stencil, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, no wonder. And people see that and are like, oh my gosh, I, my palettes are defective. I thought I had like amazing palettes and then I saw some people's swatches and I was like maybe not but then I read how they swatched and I'm like well yeah okay no wonder they used a stencil they went over it twice they wet the shadows this that and the other thing so please don't pay attention to some <laughs> pictures of swatches where they've clearly clearly done it for photo purposes and it's not to knock those pictures or those swatches, but people are, are like priming their arms, using a stencil, all this, <laughs> like, that's just different. I mean, don't get me wrong, it creates a very cute, like, look for your Instagram photo, nothing wrong with that, but don't necessarily compare your swatches to that. I feel like there's so much to talk about in this video, so I hope that this makes it to my channel because I feel like I'm kind of all over the place with my ideas on this. But, I feel like that kind of covered all the drama. 
like I said, I, I really, I just don't think Morphe and Jacqueline would release something they know is not good. I don't know. I feel, I've never been disappointed by anything Jacqueline Hill has released. I'm not trying to kiss anybody's butt. I, you know, I'm just a little channel with 700 subscribers. She's probably never going to see this. It's not anything like that. I've just never been disappointed by anything that they've done. And I think they did postpone the launch for a reason. And I think that they went into this with confidence after that. And maybe there is still a pressing issue. You know, that's not to say people who didn't get good palettes are lying. Like I said, there might have really just been still an issue. I have posted looks on my Instagram, I believe using every palette at this point. If not, I'm going to insert in this video. I have used every palette. I didn't really have any issues. I, I truly didn't. Like I said, some swatches, I was like, oh boy, I don't know. Put them on my eyes, they were fine. They were buildable. They were blendable. Yes, some shades you had to blend up a little bit. Some shades might have gone a tiny bit patchy first application, but as soon as you build it, blend it out, it was great. So I have not had any major issues with this palette. Now, with any eyeshadow palette, some shades are better, and some shades are eh, and you just gotta work with them and build them up, but nothing that I, was completely unusable, nothing that wouldn't build up, and nothing that wouldn't blend out. I've seen some pictures of people with palettes that, I mean, it's just like mud on their eyes. And I feel bad, and maybe they truly got a defective palette still, but that was not my experience with mine. The one I got for my friend, for my cousin, they all swatched very similarly. Nothing, you know, I've seen some people digging into their pants and they can't get anything, and that's not, just not what happened with mine the other two or the ones I played with at my local Ulta. So again, I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever know. Maybe we will, but my palette seem good to be honest. So that being said, I think I will insert the picture of some of the swatches from my palette along with, I think it's in the upper left hand corner of the picture a bunch of swatches of all the shades from my local Ulta. I posted on Instagram, I'm petty, and I like to keep my palettes as new as possible, so I swatch every shade with the Ulta testers, but I did swatch quite a few of mine, especially over the past few weeks, and they were all consistent with that. So I will insert pictures of that now. And in case you didn't know, this does retail for $49 on Morphe's website. You can, I think it's still available, their second restock. You can use a 10% discount code. You can use Jacqueline. You can use whoever, whoever has a code. Or you can buy them $15 individually at Ulta. And since they are $15 before tax, you could use a $350 coupon on them. So here's Armed and Gorgeous. I think this one's probably my favorite. I do have looks on this on my Instagram, which I will insert pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch Smooth Criminal. I'm doing like a, you know, one, two, three sort of business. Again, is it like the most amazing swatch in the entire world, maybe not, but it performs on the eye, and that's really what's important. Um, I'm going to uh, swatch the shade Secure. Again, that one's a little more powdery, but again, nothing I can't work with. This is the shade Coin, which the shimmers were not ever the issue. There's that right there. I'll 
just watch a couple from Dark Magic. I'm going to swatch in the shade Busted right there. This is the shade Rockstar from Bling Boss. Ugh, I feel like that was a lot of talking mostly about drama, which is unfortunate. I, it, it, honestly, it makes me sad because I was really, really swept into the drama and very anxiety ridden about the launch of this, which is sad because I feel like nothing can launch nowadays without drama and it's just really sad. There used to be a time where something would launch and there would just be nothing but excitement about it. Now it's you have to wonder if somebody's being shady or this, that, or the other thing or... And you know, with any brand... You know, Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. My favorite mascara. I love that mascara. I've gotten a weird tube before. So I'm hoping that that's, like I said, I'm hoping that's all this boils down to is, yeah, you know, there were a couple of funky batches, maybe still a pressing issue, and I hope there was nothing shady behind it. It makes me really sad <laughs> that this launch that I was so excited about when I ordered my palette, I was so anxious. I was like, am I going to get a bad one? Am I going to hate it? Am I spending my hard-earned money on something that's not going to work? You know, I bought it for gifts as other people. So, I, you know, I, I spent good money. And I was really nervous and really anxiety-ridden that I was going to get something that wasn't good. And, you know, I think if you didn't get a good one or you are disappointed that you should just return it. And I really just hope that there were, like I said, faulty batches and that nothing sketchy or shady was part of it. I really just wish that things could launch now and we just were excited about it. I, I feel like we just ripped people apart. I feel like people really came for Jaclyn Hill, like hard. And I feel like all she's tried to do was create a really good product of course she makes money from it. People are like, well, she gets money from it. Of course she does. It's like her job. <laughs> and I feel like people really, really tried to rip her apart. And I feel like even after it launched, she was still trying to get to the bottom of why people got faulty palettes. And was posting links of where you could return it and who you could email and blah, 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 blah to get it sorted out. So... I don't know, we just need to remember that these people on YouTube are human too, and I, I don't know. You know, if you got a bad palette, you know, it, it, honestly, that really sucks. It does, because I was nervous I was going to get something really disappointing. If you got a bad palette, honestly, return it, and, you know, like I said, it sucks, but, I mean, people say the nastiest, nastiest stuff to these beauty influencers on social media, just, you know, I don't know. You know, Jacqueline Hill's a person too. I hope she didn't do anything shady on purpose. I personally don't think she did. So, I feel like if anything, any drama that surrounds her launches is because she's trying to make sure things are good that she's putting her name on. Uh, anyway, that is enough about the drama portion of it. This is getting way too serious. <laughs> I just want to have fun. It's makeup. Makeup's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be so stressful. And yeah, I mean, am I going to tell you if something's not good? Of course. Should all beauty influencers tell you if something's not good? Absolutely. Do I think some of these swatch really like, eh? Yeah. Have they all performed on the eye that I've tried so far? Yeah. So, anyway, I went over the price. This is the packaging. 
Yes, it's similar to something Jaclyn Hill launched with Becca. I don't really care. I think it's gorgeous. It looks beautiful sitting on my vanity. I love it. And I was gonna wait and do a separate video, but I was like, well, why not? I also got the Jaclyn Hill Morphe brush collection retails. I got the master set, master collection, whatever it's called. Sorry, I just burped. Retails for $165. I did use a code, so I got it for $148 and like 50 cents, and it was free shipping because it was over $60 or whatever. And with $148.50, it comes out for like $6 a brush. You get 24 brushes. So yes, $148, that is steep. That's not like a cheap price. Don't get me wrong. But when you divide it by how many brushes you get, it's like $6 a brush. So I do think it's worth it. But if you're just needing new eye brushes or you're just needing a couple new face brushes, they also did do just an eye kit, just a face kit. And let me look at how much. I think the eye kit's 42. Okay, Master Collection is 165. The Face Collection is 58, and you get one, two, three, four, five brushes and a case. And the Eye Collection is 42, and you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight brushes for $42. And like I said, in the Master Collection, you get 24 brushes. So you get what's in the Face Collection, what's in the Eye Collection, plus 11 more brushes. And it comes in this really cool travel kit. So I am going to get into the tutorial portion. And I am going to use some new eye brushes that I got from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Collection. I have tried to keep them all separate of what just comes in the master collection, what just comes in the face collection, and what just comes in the eye collection, um, so that I can tell you which it comes in, because these only come in the master collection, and there are a few, actually quite a few eye brushes in here, so. <sighs> I'm going to do a whole get ready with me using all or as many as I possibly can of the brushes. So I'll do like face and everything. But right now we are just focusing on the eyes because we are just using the whole collection. Now, when I first made my Jaclyn Hill palette review when it launched last year, the one thing that I really wanted were more purples. So that being said, I am gonna use the Bling Boss palette today. And this is how you do. So, the brushes do come in a little plastic sleeve. So, I'm going to take them all out so you don't just like hear me crinkling plastic the entire video. Now, Jacqueline, when talking about these brushes, was very transparent that some of them are exactly like brushes that Morphe already has. So, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I think that totally makes sense. She was transparent about it. I feel like people are going to also attack her for that, but I feel like she couldn't win either way. If she worked for months on a specific brush and it was similar to another one that Morphe has, people would be like, oh my god, she worked on this brush forever and it's just like this brush. But at the same time, if she's just like, yeah, you know what? This brush is the same as, you know, people are just going to be like, oh my god, you couldn't come up with something different. So, poor girl, I feel like she can't win either way. But, I am just kind of fluffing these up. They're new, so I'm just like, you know, wake up so that they're not all tightly packed. Alright, so as I go, if I can think of what, a, like, one of her brushes is similar to, I will say it. So right, <laughs> right first, right now I'm going to use the JH30, which is pretty comparable to the M504, which is one of my favorite blending brushes, especially for like the first shade because it is so big. Again, I'm just going to kind of 
make it up, like I said. And I'm going to use the shade Hush Hush first. Not a lot of kick up. And I'm going to do that right all over the crease. If you see me do this a lot, that is just me like going as going as I go. As I go, just kind of keeping the edges a little sharper. I tend to do very rounded off looks and I want it to have more of like a winged outlook. And I'm just gonna do the one eye, like I'm not gonna have you watch me do like both eyes and then I'll just do the other one off camera. So I'm not having any issues blending out Hush Hush. It's just kind of like a soft lilac-y color. So again, that was the JH30. I think I'm gonna try to stick with just the eye collection, but we'll see. Fluffing it up a little bit. This is the JH32. So one's a little slimmer and slightly more pointed so I can get a little more precise in the crease. And I'm gonna use the shade Rockstar. And I'm gonna put that in the crease. Now, like I said, even though I feel like some of these did not swatch the best, I'm getting a lot of pigment on the eye. So, I, I can't really complain about a swatch if it performed well. And that being said too, I've had palettes swatch amazingly, amazingly. Not to call one out, but I'm going to the Naked, is it even a Naked palette technically, but the Urban Decay Beach palette. I swatched that sucker in store and was like, oh my god, I need it. I cannot create a look with that palette to save my life. Like, I really cannot. Um, I don't know why. Everything turns out really muddy. And I hate it. Even though it's swatched beautifully, it really did not work for me. Uh, these brushes are blending out everything very nicely, applying a good amount of color. Going back with the JH30, I'm just going to take a little more of Hush Hush and blend out the top. This is where we're at so far. Next, ugh. next I'm going to go in with the brush from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Collection, JH33, and I'm really bad with remembering numbers, but I want to say that this was similar to the M443. So this one, although still fluffy and tapered, if you look at it one way, it is flatter, so it's not like a like super round fluffy, it's more flat, so depending on how you you know, angle it. You can do different things with it. This, I'm going to take the shade Sparks and kind of just pat that on the outer corner slash crease area. So I talked forever and I need to leave for work in like 15 minutes. So this might not be the fanciest eye look ever, to be honest. Okay, so that's where we are with just like the crease shades. And I'm going to take my Shape Tape Concealer in the shade Light. And I'm going to take the shade, not the shade, <laughs> the brush 
JH42, little flat brush. And I am going to cut my crease. I am new at this, doing this, and trying this, so forgive me if it's not amazing. I'm really trying to work on my eyeshadow skills. I don't consider myself like, I mean, like, I can do eyeshadow well, but I don't know. I want to be like one of those people that does it like, whoa. Sorry if I'm kind of blocking what I'm doing. But I'm just doing like a little half cut crease. Um, that was probably the easiest I've ever done a cut crease, so I don't know if I'm just getting better at it or if it's the brush helping. Uh, probably a little bit of both, honestly. So, yeah, there we have a little half cut crease there. And I'm going to use the J, JH, I'm assuming, yep, 41. And I think I'm going to use the shade Bling Bling. Bring up that. And I'm going to pack that on. Okay. Then I'm going to go back in with... The JH32, that like more pointed blending brush, just to kind of clean up right in there a little bit. Just to bring some precision back. Which, <laughs> okay. So I brought it over for comparison. So the M507 is kind of similar to the JH40, but the JH40 is a little longer and pointier, but I'm going to use that just to kind of pack a little bit more color on the outer corner. I like to literally like draw a point basically and blend it out. Just to kind of give that sharp look and then we'll blend it out a little more. Now, I'm going to take, hmm, the JH41 again, the one I packed the shimmer on, and I'm going to take pizzazz and just kind of blend it right in here just to kind of soften up between the shimmer and my outer corner color. And then I'm just going to go back in with my JH32 and just kind of blend it out a little better. Then I am going to take a little bit of, a little bit of Hush Hush and mix it with a little bit of Rockstar and just put it on my lower lash line. I guess I could try the JH43 and try to do that too. It's like a flat little brush. Stamp it on. Yeah, those both worked really well for that, so. Okay, so this is where I'm going to end with the eyeshadow. I'm going to go do the other eye off camera, put on some liner, lashes if I can find my glue. That is what it always depends on. Every time I do a tutorial, I can never find my glue. Never. So we'll see. Might just be liner and mascara, and I will be right back. All right, guys, so here is the finished look. 
lash glue still wet, but yep, you can see it's still wet. But this is the finished look. I feel like I need a little bit more bronzer. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that real quick and be right back. Okay, so this is the finished look, and I really like the way it turned out. Again, I'm not like one of those crazy amazing eyeshadow artist. Like I said, I can do eyeshadow well, but I'm not by any means. Okay, these eyelashes look crazy. They're still drying, so I'm sorry, but I am super pressed for time. I'm running late to work, and I have to go, but yeah, sorry about my rambling earlier. I just want makeup to be fun and happy again, and you know, that doesn't mean it's all rainbows and butterflies and that all products are great. Some aren't, and that's okay. Um, and when they aren't, or if you think they aren't, that's okay. But sometimes it's not necessarily a conspiracy. Sometimes it's just your opinion or a bad batch or something like that doesn't necessarily mean that there's malicious intent behind it. Um... Yeah, so I just want makeup to be fun and happy again and to not make it an anxiety-ridden thing to buy palettes. Um, so, yeah, just to wrap up again, my experience with my palettes has been really well. Some don't swatch that great. Again, they've been performing fine on the eye. They've been consistent with other ones that I've swatched in Ulta and my friend and my cousin's palette. They've all been consistent with the ones I have been in contact and with experience with. And again, $49, 15 individually. You can buy them individually at Ulta. You can buy the Vault for a limited time in the box set on Morphe.com. And I'm going to do a whole in-depth thing about the brushes. I just thought since I have them that I would use some of the eye ones for today's look. And yeah, um, if I get in some better lighting, I'm going to take some pictures and insert it too. But yeah, that's all I really have to say. I really like it and personally would recommend the Vault Collection and so far the brushes as well. Again, I'm going to do a whole get ready with me using face, eye, all of that. And yeah, that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope if you did get the Vault that you are loving it and... I will see you guys in my next video. Please don't forget to subscribe. You can click on my face in the little bubble and subscribe there. So let me know your thoughts on the vault. Let me know if you liked it, if you hated it. Um, again, let's not try to aim hate towards people and be mean about it. It's okay to have your opinions and all of that jazz. But let's just try to be more civil and happy and just not make everything a conspiracy. So yeah, <laughs> that's all. Have a good day. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.